We rarely, if ever, noticed that our products were designed exclusively for men, but the consequences of this gender gap are felt by all. These consequences range from annoying to potentially fatal. For example, not being able to reach a shelf when it's been placed at a taller or male height is annoying, yet crashing in a car that wasn't safety tested with a female crash test dummy is potentially fatal. We make design decisions based on data, but what happens when that data ignores the measurements, experiences, and motivations of half of humanity? This data blind spot manifests itself in many ways in the products we use, all the way back to Neolithic societies. About 10 years ago, a group of economists published research supporting what they called the Plow Hypothesis. It traces the gender inequality in some societies back to the tools their ancestors used to prepare the land. In these farming communities, women played a significant role in tending the land up until plows were introduced. Plows require significant upper body strength, grip strength, and bursts of power. They were designed to be used by men. In contrast, handheld tools like hoes and digging sticks are lighter and more easily managed by smaller people with less upper body strength. Although introduced long ago, these two different tilling techniques have produced major divisions in modern society. In societies that turned to plows, women were sidelined from heavy agricultural work and kept housebound. Even today, generations later, women in those societies are less likely to work outside the home, be elected to government, or run businesses. Perhaps unsurprisingly, in societies that continue to use hoes for tilling, the gender division is less pronounced. The good news is that awareness of the gender design gap and its far-reaching consequences are growing. As researchers and designers, we're poised to help spread that message. How can you make sure the next product you work on takes into account all of its potential users?